Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome, everybody. You're listening to a Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. We're so glad you could join us, but before we get into the Word, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for being a good God to us, Lord, and that you're a consistent day in and day out, Lord. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we also just thank you that you continue to help us so we can work on our consistency as well, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you that you continue to love us and that we have the opportunity to go and love those around us, Lord. People who may not seem like they're loved, Lord, but that we're able to be a light to them, Lord. In Mm Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everybody. We are excited to have you with us as we continue our study on the Lord's house. We are continuing discussing the bronze altar for burnt offerings. Uh, but before we get into the scripture today, I just want to ask everyone uh, to, if, you, if you're blessed by this episode, to like the episode, subscribe on this channel or uh, platform and, and and or any of our other platforms and then share this episode with someone so they too can be blessed minister to and grow in christ hey john yes brother also want to encourage our listeners if you're not blessed by this one if you have some good feedback we'd love to hear it so please don't uh, be the least bit hesitant to share feedback uh, positive or uh, uh yeah um Negative. I mean, it's it's okay. We don't we don't we don't mind hearing it. And we, we just have to encourage you too. This is not the only podcast you can listen to. So if absolutely if you're not being fed and the Holy Spirit's not ministering to you through this, find one that is. But don't give up. Don't let that don't let that bother you. But we really would appreciate your feedback. If there's something we can do to make things better, um, if we're somehow or another in error with the scripture or in the teaching, anything that you feel compelled and led to share, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, reach out, let us know, contact us. And love. how would they do that, John? Well, uh, a couple ways. You can re- contact us or reach out through our directly through our website at adayofprayer.org or through our email at ministry at adayofprayer.org. We'd love to connect with you. And also, if you feel so inclined and you're in the Hampton Roads area, you can join us on the podcast. And you don't have to... I'll say be part of the recording. You don't have to have a microphone in front of you, but you do have that option to sit there and discuss the word together with us. Uh, I don't know. We have a lot of fun here. I don't know if that always comes across because the, there is a weightiness and a seriousness to what we're discussing. And I mean, we are handling the word of the Lord. So it, it does require um, a, a reverence and care in how we handle and treat it. And with that, we love discussing the Word of the Lord with mm-hmm. other people and connecting with you and developing and building those relationships and um, just bringing the body of Christ together, His bride, and learning and growing in Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, we are going to reread Exodus 27 and the first eight verses. Can I get a volunteer to do that, please? I will. All right, I promise. You shall make an altar of acacia wood, five cubits long and five cubits wide. The altar shall be square, and its height shall be three cubits. You shall make its horns on its four corners. Its horns shall be of one piece with it. And you shall overlay it with bronze. Also, you shall make its pants to receive its ashes, and its shells, and its basins, and its forks. And its fire pans, you shall make it all. You shall make all its utensils of bronze. You shall make a grate for it, a network of bronze. And on the network, you shall make four bronze rings at its four corners. You shall put it under the rim of the altar beneath, that the network may be midway up the altar. And you shall make poles for the altar, poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with bronze. The pole shall be put in the rings. And the pole shall be on the two sides of the altar to bear it. You shall make it hollow with boards, as it is shown you on the mountain. So shall they make it. 
Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you, sweetheart. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we move forward, before we open up the floor, um, there was a scripture that you read yesterday, Layla, in Amos 3, uh, verse 12. And when you read it, I didn't hear it the way I first came across it when I asked you to read it. Um, so would you mind rereading that scripture, please? I don't. All right. Um, this is Amos 3.12. Thus says the Lord, as a shepherd takes from the mouth of a lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out of uh, who dwell in Samaria, in the corner of a bed and on the edge of a couch. Okay. Hmm. So we were discussing that in relation and context to the horns on the altar, right? And they have different meanings of representations, right? We just kind of um, talked about for, in the context of that specific scripture was talked about in the context of deliverance from sin, right? But there's deliverance from sin, there's forgiveness, death of the old man, and worship, right? Yes. And all that can only happen because of Christ and who he is, right? He was the the blameless offering, right? Sacrificial lamb. Yes. But also the four horns also represent the, I'll say the four different aspects of Christ, right? Him as priest, as king, as our savior, and as the son of God, righteousness, right? Um, yes. Which relates to the the colors that um, were in the linen curtains, the veils, and also that the priests wore. We haven't covered that part yet, but it is also represented there, right? Yes. Um, so deliverance from sin, and thank you for rereading that, that scripture. But you see, it's plucked from the mouth of the lion, right? Yes. The lion... Clearly a representative of Satan, right? Who goes around, Peter talks about this. He goes around like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour, right? Yes. But then also I want to um, bring the listeners to the book of Zechariah, chapter 3. And can I get a volunteer to read the first... Five verses. I can. All right, Layla. Zechariah 3, 1 through 5. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Mm. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. It is, is this not a brand pluck, plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I have clothed you with rich robes. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Amen. So, do we see exactly what we're talking about as far as deliverance from sin? Right? You see it all, I'll say, played out as, a, and as an example. Right? Here. Yes. There is Satan who is accusing Joshua the high priest. And I want to bring that up because it's important. It is not about a title or a position in or outside of the church that saves you. That is your deliverance. Right, because it says very plainly, Joshua the high priest was standing there. He already was the high priest, but he was guilty, right? Yes. But the Lord rebuked Satan, the devourer, and said he had plucked him from the fire. As we, we talked about this in the previous episode about the... The altar, we're to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, in some versions say, which it continues and says, it's your reasonable service of worship, right? Mm -hmm. But then we also talked about how presenting yourself on on, on the altar as a living sacrifice is not unlike the the furnace for refining, 
right? Yes. It's burning away those things that can be burned away, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Hebrews talks about that. We're receiving an unshakable kingdom. So there's a shaking of those things that can be shaken, can be removed, right? Mm -hmm. But we see in, in the measurements, right? This was square, and it was five cubits by five cubits, and three cubits high, mm. right? So it and we are literally surrounded by grace. And because of that grace, he doesn't just let us burn up completely, right? Mm -hmm. Just like with Joshua here, the high priest in Zechariah 3, he plucks us out of the fire, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. He plucks us out and gives us, or I'll say takes our filthy garments and gives us uh, righteous robes, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. He was a completely different person, Joshua the high priest. He was still Joshua. He was still a high priest. But now he was the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Right? Yes. And that's what the Lord does for all of us and is willing to do for all of us. If we will humble ourselves, submit to God, and allow him to do and have his work in his perfect way in us. So I want to address that um, from the previous podcast. But now I want to open up the floor to each of you to share what the Holy Spirit has been speaking and ministering to you on this section of scripture and to ask any questions that you have, right? We're all learning and growing together. So the floor is open. Who would like to, to begin? I will. All right, I promise. Okay, first, one thing that the Lord was talking to me about was how the bronze altar, it it looked nice. It wasn't crooked and sideways. Mm -hmm. And the Lord reminded me of inside of kings and stuff when the kings got pillaged. It said they always went to the king's house and went to the temple and pillaged those plate to places. Mm -hmm. Because that's where the most beautiful stuff was found, mainly inside the temple. And also, the Lord reminded me of the temple. It was had more stuff than more riches and stuff like that than the actual king's house. Because inside of one king, I believe he took some of the articles of silver from the temple and gave it to another king that was attacking him. And so the Lord was talking to me about how that's how we should be with him. We should be straight across the board and not leaning or lopsided to one side. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. We should be. Yes. Right? Um, yes. John the Baptist talked about that, right? About uh, making the, our path straight. Yes. Yes. There's not hills and valleys. Mm. Right? It's not leaning to one side or the other, right? Um, but just straight, level. Mm -hmm. And, and so David talked about that in the Psalms as well, right? He makes straight paths for our feet. Well, we have to allow him to do that in, in, in us and in our lives. And Dean, I'm sure you, you comment on that with you know, um, your profession and, and all that and um, being level, being straight matters. And, and it's a process to get there. It doesn't just happen. It, there is work and effort required. Yes, and you have to check your work along the way. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you don't just start out um, at one point and go, okay, well, it looks pretty good right here, and then just keep going. You have to keep checking and making mm -hmm. adjustments. Which is no different than our, our walk as we're being transformed into the image of Christ. We constantly have to hold up the barometer of God's word and the Holy Spirit, what he's illuminating in us mm -hmm. to continue to make our way straight and level. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> as you bring up my profession, there's a, there's a lot here. The, the, the one thing that um, is just interesting to me is, um, you know, you were talking uh, the other day about the... Um, the weight and it being able to be portable. Mm -hmm. You were relating that to uh, Romans and uh, us being a living sacrifice. <clears throat> so as we are almost our own altar, sacrificing ourselves daily in um, 
not to gain glory for ourselves, but for glory for the Lord. But certainly others would see that. Mm. Uh, but um, yes, it was made of wood. Um, yes, it was covered in bronze, but not so much that it um, couldn't be carried. Uh, of course, um, we don't know that there wasn't six people on each end of each pole and 12 people it took to carry it. <clears throat> right. We're not really sure, but you know, from considering what happens to wood when it's next to heat, right? Um, you know, it had to have a pretty significant layer of bronze on it. So I just, mm-hmm. I just couldn't help but think of that, that the, the perfection of this, that obviously it didn't get burned up, right? Mm-hmm. So we, we know that, but yet to withstand that. And then um, somebody many years ago had shared something with me conceptually, um, I thought was so um, important when you think about this and, and how... Um, utterly messy <clears throat> it was and how uh, the sacrifice itself mm-hmm. and how Absolutely. continual it was that um, with the number of the Israelites and the sin and how they were required to bring their sacrifice before. It's like the, this, this thing was just, this wasn't like, um, you know, like we see the certain times of year where a bull was offered for, you know, the forgiveness of the sins of the <laughs> unintentional sins of the people that maybe they didn't confess. This thing was, this thing was getting cranked up daily, nonstop. Exactly. But some people think that there was times where probably it didn't stop running like 24 seven. Like they had a night shift working. And of course they had the Levites had the manpower. Yes. That it just didn't stop. I mean, just cranking it. And now, and it would have been a long process. To, it, the the flesh had to be fully burnt up. Mm-hmm. So this isn't just this isn't the grilling a piece of meat, right? This is you know, and okay, okay, it looks pretty good. <laughs> you know, you're like yours rare, or you well, well done, well done. Right? Like, I continue to burn it and 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 burn it until it's completely burnt up. Mm-hmm. And then that just you you made a um, <clears throat> you were talking about that the burning up of the flesh. Right, so we're con- we are continually mm-hmm. surrendering our flesh because we are Amen. we are at battle with our flesh. Now we have the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome that battle, but there is the battle of the flesh continually, where we have to continually place our flesh on that for that burning up. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, how's that, how's that all intermingled together? Just the duress of all that, the 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 process of all that, the strain that is on others around us the weight of our sin, what the impact is of that on others and how even more so is that I I think for my own self, if I'm just totally transparent, totally honest, um, how often do I go enough? I'm -hmm. getting off the altar right now and I stopped the process. And so what was getting burnt up now for, um, for a way to conceptualize, it mm-hmm. begins to heal. Basically, I'm covering the sin back up again. So what I've, I've started to remove, I've allowed to come back in. So when I get back up on the altar again with that part of my flesh, i got to start all over again. Right. You know? So it's just like, wow. Well, and here's another, you know, thing to consider, right? When we talked about things like the, the golden lampstand or the menorah, right? It said that it was made from one piece that was solid, Right? Mm -hmm. In verse 8, how does it describe the bronze altar for burnt offering? It was how it was shown on the mountain. No. It says, you shall make it hollow with boards. Now, yes, you can look at the, the natural things and say, yeah, well, it's difficult to have a fire with a solid object. And that's true. But it's also, again, the bronze altar. Bronze representing human nature, right? The human um, character. The things of the world, right, that are need to be burned up, right? Mm-hmm. To present yes. us pure and holy in him. It's hollow. Why do you think there are so many people that literally describe themselves before they found Christ as hollow there was an emptiness that they felt they were searching this is 
I, I didn't say those words. <laughs> the Lord said them in his word. That's why he described it. Others have said those exact same things without even knowing that it was already being stated here in Scripture. That the human, the things that humanity, human nature searches for and seeks out are empty. Because anything solid can only be found in Christ. Amen. So I just want to bring that point up real quick. And then I want to turn it back over to everyone else. I want to jump back in on that. Oh, please do, brother. The floor's open. So, um, specifically to the hollow, right? So it's a really um, interesting analogy. And when we think about how we meet people who appear to be hollow, Mm -hmm. right? And how and our own hollowness, right? Mm -hmm. And what that is. But um, back to the you know the contractor and the building component. There's also something else that would happen with that hollow as well too that I didn't even consider. So there's a fire coming out the top of this thing. It's going to be pretty hard to work around this. Right. The hollow would have actually <laughs> acted similar to an insulator. So the sides of the altar, mm-hmm. as the priests were working around it, would not have exhibited as much heat as the top of it would right. have made it more bearable. Had it been solid, mm-hmm. the heat would have radiated out from the sides quite significantly. It would have been unbearable to be next to it. Absolutely. So yet, and again, in God's design. Infinite and how, wisdom. Yes. Yeah, just, <laughs> just think of it like a cooler, right? Like right. an igloo cooler or something you know, that just has a, has a liner or a space. We use gaps a lot of times mm-hmm. when it comes to flue piping Yes. to create an air gap to help with the transfer of heat. In between things so the hollow actually was necessary there as well too oh big surprise god knew what he was doing perfect <laughs> again in his design oh well <laughs> demonstrated yet again how about that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. anyone else i do have a question though is the altar that they're using here was that the same one that they burned the heifer on to like put the ashes in the jar to purify somebody with yes This is that that altar. Our 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 brother Joseph Kaplan. Uh, if you uh, if you mm-hmm. haven't heard of Joseph Kaplan, there's a book called The Money Man. Yes, uh, written by Joseph Kaplan. Endorse that and would suggest you read it. It's a really neat story of his life, mm-hmm. and his life's not over. Uh, but, no, that. <laughs> but he is in his 80s and uh, quickly approaching his 90s, mm-hmm. and uh, has a wonderful story of how God has been working in his life for decades and decades and. Really, really cool story. Amen. But um, Layla, you brought that up. So they had to burn the heifer to do something, or they had the special times they had to do it. In doing that, they had to disrupt the sin offerings, Mm -hmm. right? Because they weren't going on simultaneously. So um, Joseph Kaplan is a Jewish um, by heritage and uh, practiced uh, standard Judaism uh, younger, earlier in his life. He Mm -hmm. never really was. um, a devout Jew, yes. um, but was brought up in a Jewish household and had all that. And and one time during a Bible study that we were having, he was talking about um, how it's so easy for us in the Western world to not fully consider the weight of our sin. Mm-hmm. And the idea of having to travel um, later to the temple, <clears throat> but even in the camp, I, I've got I've got to get something to offer for a sacrifice. I got to go find it. And I, I got to go stand in line. I might be standing in line for a day. I might be standing in line for two days waiting to offer my sin offering mm-hmm. because I've, I've got to wait for the other people that are in line to have things. If I could interject. It's, yes. But you can't just present any old thing. Right. There, are, it has to meet certain standards and requirements. Oh, right. Thank you, Lord. Yes, absolutely. But I'm just saying the the... the what he what the point Joseph Kaplan was trying to make in that was that the offerings and the structure that God was providing mm-hmm. was meant to keep the thought of sin and the avoidance of sin exactly. and the compliance with the way God had ordained for us as human beings to live yes for for our own benefit and for his glory this this was so weighty for them that 
they were always considering how they were acting and what they were doing because they well understood the cost, right? So we can say, oh, man, I cut somebody off in traffic. Lord, forgive me. I'm just late for work. And you know, we can kind of, oh, and, and, and maybe we're sincere about it. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's a true sincere, but it's, it's, it, there is a level of easiness. Think about it. You got to, okay, I got to go out to the flock somewhere and find <laughs> a, a, a sheep without blemish, a lamb without blemish, or whatever it is that I'm supposed to offer. Exactly. Maybe I don't have it. So I got to go buy one from somebody else to offer. I, I mean, I don't know. But, and then I go stand in line for two days. I mean, around the clock. It's not like I stand in line, you know, from eight to five. I got to stand in line for 24 seven for a day or two. Which means no to, work's being done. On your own stuff, on your business, on your all the things that, that other responsibilities that we have in life, and I feel the full weight of this sin on me is right. It's cost, so it's just cost, com- cost, 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 and and so many different ways. Right. So or, or structuring our lives mm-hmm. so the weight of our sin fully impacts us, and the thought of the weight of our sin fully impacts us is so important. But even more importantly, what you said. Um, earlier is, is how clearly all of this points to Jesus. Amen. Right? What Christ wanted us to see, uh, what the Trinity wanted us to see, what it was to live out was that our love for him was so great that the avoidance of sin would be the forefront of our minds, not the fear of the punishment of sin or the cost of the sin, but the loss of the intimacy, which is what Christ Mm-hmm. If you want to say feared the most, right? To be separated from God. That's the, the, the most valuable thing that That's anybody it. could have. And our sin separates us from God. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Thank you, brother. I, I want to just ponder that for a moment. Because, I mean, it, Dean, what you shared is, is absolutely accurate. But it's also weighty. It should be. All right? It's not a light thing that we should kind of just shirk off, right? We should consider the weight of our sin and what it does, how it impacts or negatively impacts our relationship with our Heavenly Father. So the desire is not to sin. And there is the other aspect of if there is anything in our lives that is in opposition to the Lord, bring it to Him. Humble ourselves, bring it to him, repent, lay it down in his feet. He already provided himself as the sacrifice so we can be forgiven when we bring those things to him. Mm -hmm. He already paid that price for us. We, in turn, shouldn't just focus on sin, but focus on the Lord because he's the only one that can carry us through that can bring us through this life and we come out looking like Jesus, conformed to the image of his son, Jesus the Christ. That's how he sees us. Because he will work those things out. All the sin, all the, th- all the impurities is if we submit to him and remain with him. Him being our God and us being his people. Amen. 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 Let's pause there for today and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to just speak to you and minister to you. And if you have any questions again, you know, of course you have the Lord who's there and will teach you and show you things in his word. And you can also reach out and contact us. I'd love to share and discuss the word with you. And if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Reach out and contact us, right? Let's begin this relationship and begin it based on the word, right? He's the foundation. So let's all learn and grow together. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness, Lord, and for your patience with us, Lord, and your gentleness, God. We thank you that you are constantly refining us, Lord, bringing us closer and closer to being like you, Lord, that we come closer to being made in the image and likeness of Christ, Lord, that we can be reunited as one, Lord. 
And we just thank you for the blessings that you're pouring out on our listeners, Lord, that you're giving them favor in the sight of their peers, Lord, that you're raising them up and making them the heads and not the tails, Lord, that they are excelling in whatever task is set before them, Lord, that you are exalting them, Lord, and that you're putting your mark and your name on them, Lord. And we just thank you for everything that you've done, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we love you. God bless you, and have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through A Day of Prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.